What is up YouTube, James back here and welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Back to Back Battles. Today, uh, we are going to be using this team one last time, Maynetric, Tapabulu, Incineroar, Gyarados, Latios, and Celesteel. So, this video is a bit late and I do apologize for that. It does go up one day late and the reason is I was actually at a tournament, a VGC tournament on Saturday and I got home a lot later because I thought I was going to be able to record after this tournament. But I just got on way too late, so I couldn't upload a video, so I do apologize for that. But anyway, um, it was Aeon win a switch. I do have matches for everyone. Do not worry, I have battle videos. I have, I think I have all battle videos. I might have missed one or two. But I should have had, like, almost every single battle video. So I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping to get, like, post commentary and also upload the regular battle videos as well if people want to see that. So I'll be uploading those in the next few days, but we still got this Maynetric team we got to finish. We got Maynetric, Tapu Bulu, Incineroar, Gyarados, Lodges, and Celestilla, as I said before. And this team has been really strange. I don't know what to say about it. Like, I definitely don't feel like this is one of the best teams I built. It's, I think it has potential. It's just really hard to play. I think I've had a lot of ups where if I played really well with this team, it does a lot of work. But I felt like even if I was able to play well, it's just... This team didn't have the tools to put itself in a good position against certain uh, Pokemon and matchups. We're going to find our first opponent, Alistair from Mexico. With the Sand team of Salamence, Tyranitar, Milotic, Excadrill, Rotom Heat, and Tapu Bulu. This is actually my first Rotom Heat I think I'm facing VGC 18. And I'm really happy because I feel like Rotom Heat is a really underrated Pokemon. I feel like it has a lot of potential to be honest. But that's just my opinion. We'll see how this goes. Hmm, I mean sand force. Okay, this is problematic because my main way to beat sand is usually and okay. This is gonna be hard. Rotom heat and my Lodic on sand is gonna give me trouble, especially with that Salamence. At least it's probably not dragging that Salamence, which is one good thing. I think Celestial is really good against my opponent. Celestial is really good. I think I could go Celesteela, Gyarados, Tapu Bulu, and Maynetric? Yeah. Because even my opponent has Milotic. As long as it's not Adrenaline Orb, I should be really good. But maybe I should have let Tapu Bulu because I... Well, I think he really Salamence Milotic here, if anything. Maybe I could have led Latios. Hmm. I think... I think that would have actually been more optimal. We'll see what my opponent decides to lead here. If it is Salam, that's my Lodic, I'm in trouble. Get ourselves Steelo. Don't be Salam, that's my Lodic. Even though it's... Yeah. Oh, there's not much I can really say about this. I just led really, really badly. Oh, this is going to be a pain. Maybe I should have led Maynetric. Maynetric would have actually been a really good lead here. So I don't know if you're going to Hyper Voice, if you're going to Double Edge, or if you're going to Tail. And I can see all of them as potential options. I think I'm going to protect Celesteela and... I think you're going to Scald that slot. I mean, my Lodic does a Dreads in the Gyarados here, which is like one thing. I think I'm going to Dragon Dance up and see how this goes, because if it's Hyper Voice Double Edge, it's not knocking out my Gyarados. It's meant to protect. An interesting decision. Maybe fearing Ice Fang on Gyarados or HP Ice on Celesteela? I don't know. But I do get a free Dragon Dance up, which I do not mind at all. I'll gladly take this free Dragon Dance. Scald into the Celesteela. Nice. Okay. So that's not how turn one ex I expected at all to happen. But that works because now I can weaken the Salamence and I'm going to Dragon Dance one more time so I can knock out my Lodic with a Supersonic Sky Strike. Salamence is going to Mega Ball. A Double Edge plus Scald I don't think knocks out Gyarados. I'm not sure if you would Ice Beam the Gyarados slot. I don't think that would KO either. This is minus one Double Edge plus an Ice Beam. But we'll see. Dragon Dance. Maybe I should have a ton mice with Celesteel, but I don't see Celesteel living on the field for long. It is straight double edge into Gyarados. This shouldn't do too much. 
a bit more than expected actually. Scald into the Gyarados slot too. Okay, don't burn, please. <sighs> uh, the plan was going perfectly too. Flash cannon, good damage, but not enough. I'm gonna autonomize for Celesteela and I'm gonna Z bounce the Salamence slot, I feel like, because I think. I don't know if Z bounce knocks out Salamence. And yeah, I know you're gonna protect anyway, but I need to put you in range of Flash Cannon guaranteed, because I'm honestly not sure. My luck's gonna protect too. Alright, that's what. That works. Because I get to go for the Z bounce, put in range of Flash Cannon, and then go for Waterfall Flash Cannon into that. Uh, Salamence slot in case it decides Escadrill or Tyranitar wants to switch in or Rotom Heat potentially. Like, my position's not bad anymore. I mean, it would have been better if obviously I wasn't burned, but you know, what can you do? Because I get to autonomize with Celesteela. There's no reason not to water for Flash Cannon, it hits everything on my opponent's team for good damage. And yeah, I don't want to get let him get a tailwind up. I might be taking a plus two Skull with Celestial, but Celestial should be able to eat that. And a burn isn't too relevant on Celestial, I want to say, unless Skull does way too much. Waterfall. And Flash Cannon. So I knock out Mega Salamence here, which is great, because getting rid of Salamence is a huge, huge threat. I get rid of that Salamence. What's coming out? Scald. Like, I don't think you target down the Gyarados slot. And I didn't want to protect, obviously, because, you know, men's could Tailwind. Okay, no burn, which is nice. Because now I get to go out, I think... I could go Magnetric or I could go Rotom. I like... I mean... I go Rotom, right. I'm going to go into Bulu. As Escadrill is going to come out. Okay. So, top of Bulu gets to go on the field. And I'm guessing the last Pokemon is Tyranitar. Mm, Magnetric would have been better here. I'm going to protect my South Steel and I'm just going to switch out to Magnetric. I'm pretty sure you Iron had the Bulu slot and go for a Scald and a South Steel, or you protect my Lodic. One of those two options, I feel like. Magnetric would have been better because I could Volt Switch or Double Flame Throw to Escadrill. So let's see what's coming out here. It's going to be my Lodic protecting. Okay. And I'm pretty sure then it's Iron Head. So I could have flamed or the Escadrill slot, but I just wanted to make the safe play possible. To be honest, I feel like Escadrill would protect here. I think Escadrill would protect here or switch out into Tyranitar, but I think I'm just going to... Bolt switch to Milotic and Flamethrower to Escadrill because I put Escadrill in range of Flamethrower. Oh wow, Escadrill doesn't. So I could have just Flamethrower that slot. I just knock out Escadrill? Oh wait, I have a special attack Beast Boost. Wait, that changed everything. I could have just Horn Leeched. Oh, people are definitely yelling at me in the comment section. <laughs> Bolt switch in a Milotic. Berry? Yeah. Okay. Where are you targeting? I get Bulu in. Scald into Celestia, okay. I wonder what the last Pokemon is. Rotom Heat is hard. I have to click Stone Edge, I feel like. I think I would have to lock myself in Stone Edge. But it's Tyranitar, yeah. If you have Excadrill, I think you have Tyranitar. I'm just surprised. Okay, I'm kind of surprised my opponent actually allowed me to get the uh, KO onto the Escadrill because I thought maybe Tyranitar would have been a good switch in there. But this works out in my favor, I guess. I just Hornly cheer. It really comes down to a flinch either way, I think. I'm just going to Horn Leech my load and protect. It doesn't matter. Because I'm assuming this is Scarf Tyranitar. Maybe Dragon Dance, but Dragon Dance shouldn't change too much. As Oh, wow. Not even Scarf. I get to knock out my Lodic because my Lodic's the one thing that can definitely knock out Bulu in one hit. I don't think Tyranitar has any move that can knock it out in one hit. Ice Punch, Fire Punch. They wouldn't pick up the knockout. 
and nice it's gonna be rock slide so rock slide coming down into top bulu it does a lot more than expected because it's life orb tyranitar actually life orb ice punch might have knocked me out but then again most life orb tyranitars carry rock slide crunch slash assurance and then low kick so i guess maybe i wouldn't have to worry too much about that but nice i can just go for volt switch and it well good oh wait i was just about to no it's a life orb it can't it shouldn't be able to win especially with foreign leech getting all the recovery back so just mega buff here so i don't know i don't feel like i played the game I don't feel like I played this game well, because I think my opponent could have just had this game, to be honest. I feel like it was just the first turn protect on Ments, and the keepy and Escadrill. But then again, I forgot about Flamethrower, so I kind of just screwed over this game. So, like I, like I could have just picked up a double knockout like the previous turn, or maybe just knocked out the uh, Escadrill that one turn and Horn Leeched on my Lodic, but I... I honestly didn't think Salsi would be able to knock out the Escadrill one hit. Because I know, like... I know Escadrill isn't the bulkiest Pokemon or what I've used it, but it's like... I didn't think Salsi would steal a non-stop or even a plus one would knock it out. I gotta pay more attention. I gotta pay more attention, especially since I know I've made quite a few mistakes throughout, like, playing this team in general, I feel like, the most. Just because this team, I feel like, has played probably some of the longest turns, I feel like, of this game. Just because of the nature of this team. So I'm not exactly too sure on how. how. But we got our second opponent from the United States of Hawaii with Japanese characters. Metagross, Cresselia, Landis, Varian, Tabu Bulu, Zapdos, and Tyranitar. Okay. This looks interesting because it reminds me of like an Edu team. Except it has Bulu over Fini and the Cresselia. Cresselia and Metagross is really interesting. Throwbacks to 2012. I loved uh, Cresselia and Metagross back in 2012-2013. Cell Swagger, Lumberry was really good. Alright, uh, how do I want to handle this? Incineroar is really, really solid in this matchup. If I can get Incineroar in a really good position, I feel like that is one Pokemon that can put in... A lot of work. I don't know how I feel about Latios. It helps against Landis, but it doesn't really do much overall. I think Celesteela can put in the work. But I'm not exactly too sh confident about that. Uh, Tapu Bulu can put in some work. Bandit Woodhammer does a lot. I think I want to go Incineroar Bulu, because I feel like that threatens my opponent's lead the most, unless it's Metagross and Landis. have Gyarados and Maynatric in the back. I'm gonna try it. I wonder if it's Grassy Sea Tabu Bulu. I'm not exactly too sure about these sets here that my opponent could have, but we'll see. But I'm honestly not too sure about the sets. How am I gonna handle this game? I feel like I feel like just Incineroar can do really well against my opponent's team, but it's Metagross Landis. Ah. Oh. Cineroar Tapu Bulu. So unless it's Z-Move Landers, which I'm not sure if it is, to be honest. I could just fake out the Metagross and Banded Woodhammer knock out this uh, Landers. Although I'd be taking a lot of damage with Incineroar. Unless it's Banded or, or Tectonic Rage, which I'm not sure if you are. I think it would be Zapdos or Bulu, potentially. You know what? I'm going to risk a turn one. I definitely see you probably maybe as AV. Then again, Bulu could be AV. It could be Scarf though. I'm gonna fake out plus one hammer anyway. I'm gonna test my luck. I think is gonna withdraw. Okay. The Tyranitar. Okay. Does that does that mean U turn coming out? I could definitely see U turn coming out. That'd be a really solid play for my opponent. Fake out into Tyranitar. Sludge bomb. That's that's life orb. No, it's just special sludge bomb, Landris. Okay, I'm I know that has been appearing, but I didn't expect it on this kind of team to be honest. Hmm, is that bad? No, I think Gyarados can set up now. 
I think I just low kick the Tyranitar slot and Dragon Dance up. But I'm not sure how much low kick does to Tyranitar since I'm minus one with Incineroar, which is a problem. But I think low kick is safe here and Dragon Dance. Sludge Bomb Landers, wow. I wonder if it's full special or if it's mixed. Or if it's AV potentially and it's Sludge Bomb the last move just to cover Bulu's. I didn't expect it to have Sludge Bomb just because I felt like my opponent had enough tools to beat opposing top of Bulu. But we'll see here. Lander's going to switch out. Going to go out into Cresselia. Okay. So we know all four of my opponent's Pokemon. Unfortunately, Rock Slide is going to really hurt my team. In Cresselia. I mean, I don't feel like it goes for Trick Room here. If anything, I think it'd be a nice win set. Low kicking a Gyarados. Huh? Okay. I wonder if that was an actual misclick or if you were predicting me to go and sell seal, but I still think Rockside would be your best play any Okay, that's a really weird play. I don't think I have anything. Like I had Latios, Maynetric, and Celestila as potential Pokemon that could switch into Loki. I don't get that play. It's gonna knock off the Cresselia and go for a waterfall. I don't care if Cresselia goes for Icy Wind. It's if it Trick Rooms and Sonora is actually in a really good spot here. What the heck? <laughs> Oh, what the heck? Someone please tell me what just happened. That was def... I swear that's a misclick. I feel like... I don't know if it's misclick on low kick or if we targeted in... Was going to target in Incineroar slot. Whatever happens, I'm threatening a waterfall onto Tyranitar as Tyranitar is going to switch out into Lander. So that thing's going to be taking a waterfall. Even though it's minus one, it should still 2 a KO Landers, which I'm okay with. What's coming out? Icy Wind? Waterfall. Yeah, that's still good damage to be honest. Psy Shock, okay. An offensive Cresselia. Psy Shock? Oh my lord, that did a lot. Knock off. Get rid of your Mago Berry. I wonder if this Landers would switch out or if it would just decide to attack again. Because I could go for Flare Blitz. Wait, does Knockoff do more? Flare Blitz. Knockoff, what, 60? It's like, what, 65? Doubled. Plus stab. I want to say Knockoff more. Wait, hold on. Does Knockoff do more? Yeah, I think Knockoff does more to Cresselia. So I'm just going to knock off that slot, even though I got rid of its item. Because I think Stab allows it to be more powerful. Then just going to protect Gyarados. Because I don't think... Even if it's our Power Landers, like, I should be good. And you could protect. Even though I think you're AV. Yeah, it's Earth Power. Okay. Although, maybe I shouldn't have let my opponent get Earth Power damage on Incineroar. Because it makes the matchup a lot tougher. Psy Shock into the Gyarados slot. And a knockoff into the Cresselia. Now I think I... I could Super Sky Skystrike knock off the Landers, but I'd be too weak under my Incineroar. Although I would save my Gyarados, actually, and Incineroar should take one... Looks like it takes one more. It looks like it takes one more Earth Power, so you know what? I'm gonna Z-Bounce the, Gar the Cresselia and knock off the Lander slot. Because if I can get rid of both of my opponent's Pokemon here, Maynatra could win against the Metagross, depending on what it decides to do here. Because if it's the same role with Earth Power, I get a double knockout. You Earth Power my Incineroar as I knock off your Landorus. Picks up the knockout, Super Sonic Sky Shock knocks out Cresselia. Unless my opponent makes a switch, which would be alright. I think you would always say in Psy Shock, because I don't think you want Gyarados to knock out your Landorus, potentially. And then, like... Then I would still have my boost of Gyarados, and then I get like a free attack with Incineroar. So I don't think you'd ever switch out to Cresselia's slot. So Super Sonic Sky Strike gonna come out, target down the Cresselia. Gonna pick up the knockout. 
It does. Okay. And Stone Edge. And I guess, which I do not. Do I mind? I do. Critical hit. Oh, wait. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I thought that was Incinero for a second. I'm like, oh. But, like, then I just realized. So, it has to be AB, right? Yes. Okay. Sandstorm subsides, so I actually do get a bit more grassy terrain. But grassy terrain is going to disappear too, which I'm not sure how this is going to change. How weak was the Tyranto? I feel like it was at 25, yeah, 25, 30. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to make a raid because I don't think Volt Switch knocks out Tyranitar, and I'm pretty sure Metagross can get free reign. Okay, so if I Mega Evolve here, Maynetric survives an attack from Metagross. Cinnara can get a Flare Blitz off, or a low kick into Tyranitar. I might be able to win, but <sighs> it's not looking good. So I think. I either go for the Voltage Crit, which is unlikely to happen, or I go on the bank. I think I'm going to bank off me living a rock slide. Maybe I could... Actually, no. I could just protect, too. I'm just worried about a double up. I'm going to protect low kick. Because if my opponent goes for Zen Headbutt and a Maynetric and a... Rock slide. I should be able to have a Rock slide with Incineroar. Then I could Flamethrower, Flare Blitz, the Metagross slot. And two Flamethrowers should knock out Metagross. I wonder if Metagross also just stays in regular forms and attacks with like Sami Tantrum. I mean, if you have Sami Tantrum. What? No way. No way. You don't get a speed boost, but you get an attack boost, which is problematic. Crunch. You do have Sami Tantrum, but do you KO? You don't. This is really close because I don't know how much Stomping Tantrum does to Incineroar. <sighs> Mega Tyranitar and regular Metagross? That caught me way off guard. Unfortunately, Incineroar took a bit too much. Comes down to how much Stomping Tantrum does. I mean, Mega doesn't even knock out um, Tapu Koko. So, I think I could survive. Flame... Uh, my opponent's just going to go for uh, chip damage with the sand, which I agree with because it is the best play, I think. I might lose because of sandstorm plus Somming Tantrum. Let's find out. Mega Metagross also gets an attack buff and a Tough Claws boost when you're using Somming Tantrum. So we'll see. If it's weakness policy, which we saw in VGC 17, it probably does pick up the knockout. Flamethrower is a 2 KO. It's not weakness policy. Ah, uh, but Maynetric takes too much, and Maynetric goes down, unfortunately, but <sighs> gonna lose against my opponent. Uh, nothing to be ashamed about, the <sighs> the Landris with Sludge Bomb caught me off guard. Like, my opponent's team was really something. I'm gonna say really something, because I had some sets that were just able to catch me off guard. The Tyranitar? Mega Tyranitar, which my opponent never revealed until the end. The... Is it double Mega? Like, what? I'm so confused. I'm going to find one more. I want to find one more. But what the heck? Regular Tyran... Mega Tyranitar and a regular Metagross. I did not think I would see that. I did not think I would see that coming. But we got someone from Japan as our last opponent. We played this opponent. We played this opponent. We played this team. I know we played this team. I don't remember how we do this. If I remember, Incineroar Bulu did really, really well. Yeah, Incineroar Bulu was my lead. I had Maynetric and I had Gyarados in the back. Yes, those were the four because Incineroar Bulu pretty much pressured my opponent's entire team. Uh, Maynetric redirected the Volt Switch from my opponent's. Main hat trick. 
Wait, did I lead this or did I lead Maynatric plus Incineroar? I don't think I led Maynatric plus Incineroar. I could have. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I honestly have no idea. But let's find out together what's going to happen because I'm not exactly too sure what's going to happen at this rate. So what is my opponent going to lead here? I would assume... Alphatel? No, Self Steel and Maynatric. Okay. Fake out Woodhammer is looking really good right here. Then knock out the Maynatric with Banded Woodhammer even at minus one and... Okay, this is the this is the good thing about Volt Switch because my opponent could just switch out South Steel, go into Feeny, Volt Switch, go out in a uh, South Steel to take my Wood Hammer. So, and again, I don't think it would change the position other than Intimidate, and I could still flip this to South Steel the following turn. I'm still going to fake out Wood Hammer. I don't care if you protect. Yeah, I feel like this is fine. And next turn, I could also just switch out to my own my, my own main attack to take an Electric type attack. So, unless you Volt Switch out, this main metric is going down. So, let's see what's coming up. Maybe Double Protect here, too. I could just see Double Protect, play it safe, avoid the Fake Out. I really want to run Swords Dance in Center one of these days. So, whenever they decide to Protect, I could just SD up. Uh, yep, Double Protect. It's fine. Fake out into the South Stila and Woodhammer into the Protect. So I'll just switch out Bulu and go out and main Natric. I don't see a reason not to. And I think I'm just going to go for... I think Knock Off because I don't need the Recall just yet. And I want to get rid of its item if it's Leftovers. I'm pretty sure it might be a double up in the Bulu with like a Heavy Slam plus Volt Switch. I could see Elite in the Cinnaroar too, to be honest. But... I feel like this is the best play because I get rid of an item on Celesteel, especially if Celesteel decides to withdraw for whatever reason. But Maynatric's just such a safe play here. Flamethrower should be fine. It is a Volt Switch once again, so I do get the boost with Maynatric, which is really nice here. And Leech Seed's going to go out in Incineroar? Yeah, okay. Which I don't mind. I didn't want Incineroar to be too unhealthy after Flare Blitz and then Celesteel gets all its recovery back. So I'd rather get this n Misty Seed. Oh, right. This is the Misty Seed one. Okay. So it's not Tectonic Rage. That's something really good to know. I could probably just get in, uh, Gyarados here. Because Gyarados is pretty safe. And I could just protect my main metric here. I'm just going to play it safe. I don't want to take a flame like double flamethrower just yet. I wonder if it's, no, Beach Seed, Misty Seed. Misty Seed, I feel like it'd be Acrobatics. Celestial's gonna withdraw, which is okay here. Landers gonna come in, okay, that works, because I get my Gyarados in, which is great, because I get to intimidate this Landers. And I can Dragon Dance up now. And I have both his Intimidators on the field, so this is really nice, because now, I can just Dragon Dance up, and I think Volt Switch, the main entrance is a pretty safe play. Earthquake won't knock out my main metric, especially with the minus one plus grassy terrain. Protect. Flamethrower? Snarl. Okay. That works. So Gyarados takes minimal damage here, and I can Dragon Ants, and I can just Volt Switch the main metric slot. I don't know what he has in the back, though. It's either Feeny or Snorlax, I feel. If he switches out main metric, that means whatever's coming in takes a Volt Switch, and I don't feel like anything other than Snorlax or Gothita would appreciate, but I don't think you bring Gothita on this matchup, to be honest. I feel like it's Feeny. So whatever is taking a strong Volt Switch here, and I can go out into Incineroar for Intimidate or Top of Bulu for the KO. I think both are very viable here. Uh, if it's Alcila coming in, potentially... Did my opponent really just Volt Switch? I mean, it makes sense because uh, you worry about maybe Maynatric Mega Evolving, but I get a Volt Switch off. Good damage on that Maynatric. Very nice damage. Uh, I think it's Top of Bulu because I'm pretty sure Rock Slide would come out, if anything. Maybe Earth Power if, that, if the lander is special. <laughs> I gotta assume this now, so Top of Bulu can come in. It's just Rock Slide. If I don't flinch here, I'm in a fantastic position. If I do, that's problematic. 
Nice. Okay. So I get a Dragon Dance up with Gyarados, and now I can Waterfall that Lander slot, and now I can switch out into my own Mainetric for the Lightning Rod once again. My opponent's really dressing by opposing Mega Mainetric. I, it doesn't even matter if my opponent reads it, be, or just decides to flame at the top of blue slot because it's a good play. Uh, I get my Gyarados safe. And if it's Mainetric or Lander doesn't switch out, like as I'm not intimidated with Gyarados, and I can still fire off like really powerful Waterfalls at plus one. So this is the best play for me, I feel like, no matter what. As my natural is going to switch out here, go out into the South Steel. Okay, which makes the most sense because you can take the grass type attack from the potential top of Bulu. As Land is going to switch out too, I'm guessing that's top of Fini. Nice. So I do have Super Sky Skystrike. I just don't know if my opponent would switch in Landers once again. Bulu gonna switch out, Mainetric. Like, I don't have to worry about Feeny. I just have to get rid of Celesteela, and then I feel like my Bulu is really safe overall. So, I think I'm not sure my opponent would risk the Celesteela here. I feel like I just waterfall because I could see Landers coming back in and Feeny protecting. Either way, Feeny can't knock out either one of my Pokemon. So, Volt Switch plus Waterfall should be just very safe in the Celesteela. Uh, yeah, because I could definitely see Celesteela switching out if anything. Into maybe like Landers because it doesn't want to take an electric type move. I can even see main Atric, but if I get if I weaken the opponent's main Atric, that's pretty good overall anyway. Just because like if I get rid of one of my opponent's intimidators, it's like a lot easier to sweep like Gyarados and Incineroar. So we'll find out what my opponent decides to do here. I don't think Tapu Fini is that valuable. Like if you're my opponent, you might decide to attack with Fini. Yeah. Okay. Waterfall into the South Steela. Good damage. Volt Switch. Ooh, barely, barely missing the knockout. Unfortunate. Incineroar is expendable. I don't want to switch into a Flamethrower Heavy Slam. I wonder if it's Elite Seed and Moonblast going on in Gyarados. Moonblast. To Gyarados, I should KO. Wonder if... Elite Seed, okay. Into Incineroar, okay, that works. Because now I can Super Sun Sky Shark and Flare Blitz. Which I will 100% go for Super Sun Sky Shark because I can knock out the Feeny here. And getting rid of the Feeny is nice for my Incineroar. And the South Seal is really low, which is like really big here. The problem is that Landers, if it's special Landers, it's really problematic. If it has Sludge Bomb, because that might be the end game my opponent's playing to. I don't know if he would protect here on the fake out. I mean. Maybe I should have expected that. Well, Celestia is going to protect, but I didn't think Feeny would protect. Okay, this works. So I get the Super Sky Skystrike off. It is going to target down the Feeny. And that should KO because we're plus one. We haven't been intimidated with Gyarados yet. So I get rid of Feeny. Celestia is really low. Landers might want to come back in. Did I weaken the Landers at all? I don't think I did. I get the knockout on Feeny. Yes. Which is great. And Flare Blitz into the Celesteela. Oh, wait. I wasn't only cheated with my <laughs> Gyarados. Cinnor is pretty low, though. Gyarados. I wonder if Waterfall and the Flame Door knocks out the Salvus Lannis. I think it depends on the spread. Mainatric might want to decide to come back in here. Yep. I mean, I have a very free switch in, I feel like, to my Bulu. Because I'm pretty sure you might snarl here, if anything. So I'm just going to switch in Bulu and Flare Blitz. The Celesteela. Because even if Landers decides to come in, I get a lot of damage on the Celesteela. And I don't feel like my opponent's ever going to click an Electro-type move. I think it's Snarl, Flamethrower, or you might Volt Switch to Gyarados slot. But I don't think you target down the Incineroar slot. So I should be pretty safe from that. Oh, man. Oh, wait. I don't remember. Was Celesteel faster than my Incineroar? I think it was. It could Heavy Slam double up. That's definitely a potential option. Overheat. That was a fire type move. I thought it would be Flamethrower. Maybe I should have sat Gyarados. 
I mean, Bula goes down, but I do get to knock out onto Acrobatics. Oh, yeah, it's Misty Seed. That does a lot. Flare Blitz going to come out into South Steel. I should pick up the knockout. Into South Steel. Now, this game is really, really interesting. It's really interesting. This main actor is at minus two, so it doesn't really do anything anymore. I can go out into my main metric. I do have grassy terrain up, so it's just really how much does that Landis do? That's the question. Like, what kind of Landis is it? If it's special, I'm screwed. If it's physical, I'm safe. Landis comes in. I can protect Mainetric and switch out into Gyarados, sack Gyarados, because I don't think Gyarados can win this game anyway, and I would prefer Incineroar to get one fake out into Landris. I mean, I should still be alright here, it's just, I'm not sure. Because his main attric can snarl my own main attric, so knocking out that Landis is going to be even more of a pain. I'm going to have to rely on Flare Blitz, I think. But at least I'm going to be able to put this main, uh, this Landis at minus two. That's how I feel. If I can put this Landis at minus two, get one Flare Blitz off, maybe I can win this game. Because main attric might be able to 1v1 his main attric. So let's see. Protect. Don't Mega Ball just yet. Snarl going to come out. And I'm guessing it's a rock slide. And I'm hoping it hits because I want to free switch it to Incineroar. Rock slide? Okay, knocks out Gyarados. So now I go out into my top of Bulu. I don't think he's special. I don't think he's special. Let's see. Incineroar. Should be able to take one Snarl. Like, I just Flamethrower here. Yeah, I definitely go for Flamethrower here. The reason I go for Flamethrower here is because in case he decides to target the Incineroar with an Electric-type attack, I feel like it's better, and I don't really need the special attack for... I don't know, I might regret this, but here's my thought process. I fake out Flamethrower the Landorus. He's going to Snarl. Yep. Or if he would electric type move, target out my Incineroar, because then maybe, maybe he would be able to knock out my Incineroar guaranteed. Because I don't know if Incineroar will live Rock Slide. I think it will. Flamethrower. How much damage does it do? We'll find out if you're Salt Vest. You are Salt Vest. Okay. Now it comes down to how much fla fla Flamethrower does to Landers. And I'm going to Mega Evolve now. If my opponent Volt Switches and goes for Rock Slide, very solid play on my opponent's part but i have to go for this play i need to knock out landris if possible and flare blitz probably does pick up the knockout i would assume if not we're gonna have some problems but if it puts in flamethrower range or snarl range i should be good anyway so i'm gonna mega ball get this intimidate off onto landris once again but if i flinch with incineroar it's game over that's like the one problematic part if i get one flinched with incineroar i'm gone protect you Volt Switch. No, you Snarl. Okay. Cinnamon should live one Rock Slide, I believe. Rock Slide. Don't flinch. Or crit. Yeah. Okay. Incineroar, please do some massive work here. Okay, I think we win. Well, if over he crits, of course, for my opponent, but <laughs> now I'm in a really solid position because I can also snow with his main metric too. My main metric's at full, but he's at minus two. And overheat only has like five PP. And he has less your timer than me. So I snarl here. As he goes for snarl, but we're gonna lower each other's special attack and I it might come down to timer actually. Cause I'm gonna snarl him. It might also come down to a miss of snarls, but I should have this. I like how we're just snarling each other. It's like Mega Manetric Snarl. <laughs> I mean, I just protect. I stall out your timer. 
for my opponent because it's an it's an option like it's a possible win for me right like I just keep clicking snarl and then he's not able to hit my miniature with much damage and I could stall out like overheat power points if my opponent decides to risk overheat so I'll go for snarl it might also oh wait this miniature not max speed is it I don't think it is one of my opponents also now I outspeed stuff that speed creeps pheromones, so he'll probably go first. Snarl. Yeah, so I think he's max speed. Or at least something faster. It might be EV Tower speed like Animant slash Moz Pheromosa. So it's a Snarl War. <laughs> I'm gonna play this wrong because I don't win speed tie. I just protect. I keep protecting because I can still stall out your timer. Like, it's three seconds every time, I think. And yeah, I stall out one power point of overheat, and that was his second one. And if my opponent keeps going for overheat, like, your special attack is going to be lowered by a lot, and I have flame door as a safe option. And yeah, my opponent's going to go for overheat. So you're going to be like minus five. Yeah, and that overheat really, I don't think, was like worth it. Snarl. I would have kept snarling if I was my opponent, but I think my opponent need, needs to get the damage, which makes sense. Oh wait, damn. Oh wait, did it? They, did they go for overheat already? Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. I just protect. Then I flamethrower. Like this might be a long, boring game, and I'm not sure my opponent would have this normally in the bag. But flamethrower should do a lot more. I don't need to snarl anymore, and I still have another power point of overheat. And yeah, my opponent really doesn't have much time left, so I'm just going to flamethrower protect, flamethrower protect, and this game should be over. It really comes down to if he crits. Okay. Flamethrower. How much does this do? It's minus three. That really doesn't do much. He might have won, actually. Well, then again, it depends. I mean, I think you should just snarl here because you know that I'm going for protect, stalling out your timer. No, you just keep going for overheat. That's one less overheat. And I'll go for flamethrower. I also have a chance to burn. And yeah, second him three seconds every time. Overheat. Yeah, that's not enough. Flamethrower. And I get the crit, which is unfortunate for my opponent. I feel like I would have won on timer anyway. And people might say, oh, you only won because of timer. Uh, timer is a legitimate option, and I feel like, yes, I don't agree with the your timer for VGC 17, but if I have that win condition, and if any opponent has this win condition, they should always go for it, because they try to win. But we do pick up that win. I'm actually not sure, because it would have came down to how many overheats he did, because had left, because as I was stalling out the protects, but then again, I feel like it was obvious I was going for protect every time, so maybe my opponent could have just kept snarling every time I protected it would have been an interesting mind game if my opponent had more time but I was just going for the timer because I knew it was a potential option I should have also kept track on the main entry because I actually didn't know that it was minus six at the time but anyway thank you all for tuning in today's episode of VGC 2018 Vectric Bows this team had a weird feel throughout it but yeah uh next team also is going to have a real weird feel through it so look forward to that but thank you all for tuning in today's episode if you did please leave a like down below show some support as well as you can check out my social medias down below my side tiers on the channel which i do have and of course the playlist down below and if you want to go try out this team down below there's a pace spin of it as well so try it out on showdown if you want but otherwise i will catch you around in another video thank you all for tuning in and i will catch you around next time